Welcome, guys, to the Being Abroad podcast. Uh, it's a new episode. It might seem a little bit different today because I'm hosting. Um, my name is DeAndre Kud Anderson, previous uh, fellow student from SUNY Oswego. But today is a little bit different. We're going to host, well, I'm going to host, but we're going to interview the original host, Miss mm-hmm. Awa. Um, I, I'm sure many of you guys know that she has studied abroad herself, and I'm sure you guys are interested in her story. So without further ado, let's uh, start by introducing yourself, Awa. Uh, what year are you? Where you're from? Uh, where did you study abroad? And let's start from there. All right, cool. So, hey, guys. <laughs> my name is Awa. Um, I'm a current student at Oswego. I'm in my last semester of my senior year. Um, I was able to study abroad in the Czech Republic in the year of the fall 2019 for a semester. Um, and as well as my identities, I am African-American. I identify as African-American. I identify as a woman and as a student as well. So, yeah. All right. Nice introduction. So I actually want to start off with how did you end up studying abroad? So take me through the process. Imagine I was a new student Mm -hmm. and I would like to know, okay, you studied abroad. What was your first step? What did you do? Like, how how did this end up being about? Okay, so I feel like like mentally I've always kind of like knew I was supposed to study abroad or I knew I wanted to go someplace that just wasn't America like a lot of the times it may sound like I'd be talking bad about America but I really don't you know I, I like being from here but it's like I just know there's more out there for the world to offer right. and you know I was one of those persons where I was just like you know I want to see who else is feeling the same way about travel as well so you know I had one of my friends um shout out to you Fatima um I had one of my friends Fatima um you know we share a lot of things in common you know we're from the same country um so it's kind of like having like a nice sister on campus so I was like all right cool like let's def so she was like you know let's look into study abroad and I was like all right cool we can definitely just go away together and it would just be like amazing and you know I have my parents support because my parents are immigrants to this country so it's like I don't know that kind of gave me more leverage because my parents weren't stopping me from going so I was just like okay cool like let me you know just go for it so we went to the study abroad office and we had we had an idea where we wanted to go because I I think we wanted to Mm -hmm. go to the UK we wanted to go to the UK, but you know, the UK prices just wasn't matching up, you know, because we were thinking uh-huh. about all of this stuff last minute. Like we were literally looking into the application about a month before the application was actually due. Uh-huh. So it was no thought into it, really, like no main preparation. Like we just woke up, it was just like, hey, let's give this a shot. And um we kind of went to the study abroad office. We got presented with um, a whole bunch of countries and we were just like, okay, cool. Like we need to find something that falls within our budget because we didn't plan for this. Mm-hmm. And we need to figure out like how we're going to be able to go there and also make it affordable. So of course the study abroad office, being the study abroad office has so many different resources. Um, they presented us with, you know, just a whole bunch of um, programs that were very similar to the tuition that Oswego, we were already paying at Oswego so right. you know, we had a whole list we had like what I think we had South Korea Germany wow. Czech Republic Hungary there was like a lot of, I think it was like maybe two schools for Hungary on there and um, we were all just like you know we was looking into it you know it was like you know this is not the UK but you know we could always just travel to the UK yeah. while we're in one of them because <laughs> you know it's Europe I think Europe is what, enough, second huh? smallest, yeah, second smallest yeah, continent. So you could definitely get from point A to point B very mm-hmm. easily. So we were just like, okay, cool. Um, let's let's see what the list entails. So we started looking through stuff. We were like, you know what? You know, we could go to Asia, but you know, looking back, I I I definitely do appreciate my study abroad at um, you know, in the Czech Republic. But I was like, you know, mm-hmm. definitely looking back, I'm like. Korea would have been lit too but you know we was like maybe we'll go to Asia maybe we was like maybe but then after I think we said no to Asia because it was like maybe this will be too outside of our comfort zone you know too outside of our comfort zone and then on top of that my friend Fatima was a very picky eater she was just like yeah like this is not gonna work for me (laughs) so we was like all right cool South Korea we're kicking that off the list we started looking into the school in Germany I don't know. It just didn't like impress us that much. And we're just like, Mm -hmm. "Eh, we won't like look into Germany too much. And then I think we looked into the two schools in Hungary and it just, again, it just didn't like impress us. And then we finally looked into the Czech Republic and we looked into um, Masaryk University and we were like, wow, 
this is kind of cute. You know, us being girls, we're like, this is kind of cute. You know, like, I like the color scheme, you know, not even mm-hmm. looking at to the country, mind you. That's how you know we were so unprepared for this. But we were just like, the color scheme is cute. You know, they, I like the little university sign, nice little statue. You know, there's, there wasn't any YouTube videos on it. So I'll, I'll, like, I think our decision was literally based off of pictures. And then from there, we were just like, hey, let's go to the Republic of Czech. And, you know, we were butchering the name for weeks. And we were just like, let's just go there. Let's apply for it. Um, not yet, because now that I look about it, it's actually kind of funny just how we landed and our decision to go to the Czech Republic. But that was pretty much a little bit of the process of us going or even making a decision about what country we were going to. All right. Well, um, I definitely heard you and definitely going somewhere that's affordable. So uh, can you touch on like any scholarships you may have gotten or any, you know, benefits that you've gotten by going abroad? Yeah. So um, one thing about studying abroad, you know, is just definitely finding, especially like for underrepresented students, you know, like a lot of the times we kind of think about financing and that's very important, especially when you're going abroad, because you definitely don't want to break the bank to, you know, have a good time. But you also want to be aware of like your resources. And then again, because Fatima and I, you know, we were thinking about studying abroad very last minute. A lot of the scholarship Mm -hmm. deadlines had surpassed us. I think we turned in the application maybe two days before the application was even due. So we weren't even thinking about scholarships at all. We was like, all right, after after we get accepted, we'll start thinking into scholarships. But just so y'all know, unless you really don't meet the requirement for study abroad at all, when I say you really, really, really don't meet it, because it's it's really like some, the standards is really like easy to get into, especially with the GPA is like a 2.0, I think, to even, or maybe a 2.7. I think it's like a 2.0 to yeah, even get it. Like, you just have to be in good academic standing really in order for you to mm-hmm. get it. So it's automatic. I think maybe... The application was due April 1st. I heard back a response the week later that I got accepted. So they be moving quick with it. Uh-huh. They be really quick with it. And um, like I said, back to financing, I didn't really plan for this. So I didn't have enough time to really apply to like bigger scholarships, you know, that bigger mm-hmm. scholarship that may have covered my entire expenses. But um, I did apply to other scholarships such as the um, Get-Go Scholarship I believe that was with the modern language department. Um, I applied yeah. to that. And I also applied, I lived in Hart Hall. So I applied to the um, Hart Hall, I think it's called the Hart Hall Scholarship. I could be butchering right. it. But um, I applied to a um, scholarship in a Hart Hall. And that basically just, they basically just gave me money. And what they told me was like, okay, cool. Like, we're going to give you money. And all you have to do is come back and do a presentation. If y'all know me, That's I like awesome. to yeah, I like to talk. And, you know, with this situation, you're really just talking about yourself and your experience exactly. you know, for like an hour or so. And you could definitely put on different type of presentations. So it was super, 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 super fun. So I was like, you know what? I like to talk. Might as well talk about my story and get some money while I'm doing it. You know, mm-hmm. so those were the, if I'm being honest, those were the only two scholarships that I uh really really had when I went and you know those did come in clutch because it kind of it contributed a lot to um my other excursions because I don't think mm-hmm. you get those scholarships until you're basically a few months into the country anyway I think right. I would get it around like October or something so I was already settled in comfortable already so when that extra money did come in it was just like okay cool I'm probably going to a different country with my friends this weekend like mm-hmm. it'll contribute to like my outside excursions so um yeah all right, so let's let's switch gears a little bit. So you got accepted. You're pretty much you're ready to go. Uh, it sounds like you kind of chose Czech Republic on the whim, so you didn't know too much about the area, but you were still excited to go, right? Yeah. So you're on the plane, and I'm sure one of the first things you kind of think about, and I always specifically say as a woman, is safety. Um, mm-hmm. Even even in our own hometowns, we're all you know worried about the dangers that may happen walking out too late at night, um, and especially being in a foreign country. How did you feel in terms of being safe with the program, uh, with the area that you're in, with the country that we're in? Okay, so in terms of safety, and, you know, this is just to kind of like pull it back just a little bit in terms of my decision of even accepting, you know, you know, because you after you get after you apply, you get in, you know, there is a process for you to fully like kind of accept that right. you, know, you have gotten into it. So, you know, during that process, like I said in the beginning, I had planned to go with my friend and, mm-hmm. you know, things actually didn't go up that way. Like, um, you know, my friend couldn't go. So that was one of the main reasons why I was actually going because I was like, you know what, like, 
even if I get alone out there, like I'll always have somebody I can like have comfort exactly. and and it's like somebody like I'm not going to be out there by myself. And, you know, she ended up um, having to, you know, um, sit out on this trip um, due to like some major changes and stuff. So I was like, wow, I'm really going to be by myself. So that was already I wouldn't say that was a red flag for me, but that was already like, all right, cool. Like uh, this is a little bit sketchy. Like, all right, what I'm going to mm-hmm. do. So, you know, um. Like you said, like, you know, getting on that plane by myself, like, this is the first, first, first ever time I was traveling by myself because I had traveled right. before, but I was traveling with like a group of people. So this is the first time I was going by myself. And I remember, I feel like the first sign I had in terms of safety, but now that I think about it, it really wasn't like I was in danger or anything. But um, I remember I was getting on the plane because my first flight was um, I had to go to Sweden for about like um, a day or so. And um I had got on the plane and and I remember like the I actually like for the first time I was like on the plane and I wasn't like sitting next to my friend. I remember like this guy had came. He had sat next to me and he was from he you could tell he was from Europe. I think he was actually from Sweden itself. And he had came and he sat next to me. And I remember it was very like weird because I was like, all right, why is this man sitting here? Like he got all these damn seats in the plane, and, <laughs> you know, all these seats in the plane. And he want to come sit next to me like <laughs> go away. <laughs> so, you know. And he sat next to me and then he just started talking and then he started talking to me you know oh. and I was just sitting here like yeah this man can't be from America because he would not be sitting yeah, here on a full conversation with me so he's asking you know like where are you going you know um how long are you going to be in Sweden? Um, how long are you going to be here? How long are you going to be there? And not, and it's like, looking back at it, it was honestly just friendly conversation, especially for mm-hmm. me being around the European culture for a semester. I've gotten kind of familiar with how, you know, interactive, like a lot of international people is like, they honestly mean no harm for it. Like they're just super friendly. And, you know, me being right. in New York. And, yeah. you know, we, we're not too friendly. Like, friendly over here. We're not friendly. It's not, yeah, we're not friendly. Like, don't talk to me. Leave me alone. Right. So, you know, I'm sitting here. I'm just like, yeah, this man's about to piss me off. We on a, I think the flight was like nine hours and it was like a direct oh flight. God. And I was like, yeah, this man is about to piss me off. Like, can he stop talking to me? So he's still talking. He's talking. We get off the plane and, you know, I'm like speeding past him because, you know, I'm trying to like get my luggage and stuff because I was ready to go to my hotel. I was just over it because a lot of things had like transpired before I got on that plane. And I was just like, I just need a bed. I just need to sleep and start the day off again, you know? Right. And, I had, like, saw him again, and, you know, like, he was like, oh, like, you're a very nice person, you know, like, if you need some, com- like, he was, like, inviting me out to, like, get drinks with him and his friends. He's like, you know, mm-hmm. we could definitely, you could hang out with us and stuff, and, you know, I, like, in that moment, I don't know, like, in that moment, I definitely did feel, like, scared in that moment, but again, right. like I said, thinking back to it, I was just like, it's not really a big deal. I was like, he was really just being friendly. Right. Um but in terms of safety in the Czech Republic, I had done a lot of research on that. Um, the Czech Republic is actually one of the, like, the safest countries in the entire world. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, it's actually one of the safest. I'm not sure if it was... I think when I went, it might have been, like... I want to say it was top maybe 11. It might be top 20 now. But... Um, it was pretty, it's definitely really safe. So I didn't have like any like safety issues while I was there at all. Like I felt very comfortable um, even when I to and from class or when I was coming home late from, you know, just maybe hanging out with people. I didn't feel mm-hmm. unsafe. Like, I, yeah, I felt pretty, pretty good. Like I didn't, I wasn't too scared about anything, but I think like when I think about safety, that was like the first situation I think about is that plane incident. Cause that was the time where I was feel like, yo, this right. man is probably a creep. Like, <laughs> What did I get myself into, you know? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. When, when I got there, I didn't feel like, and it was never a time where I actually felt, you know, unsafe. So, yeah. That's good. All right. So you land, right? You're in the Czech Republic. Uh, where did you stay? Did you stay with a host family on campus in an apartment? Um, I actually stayed um, in a dorm. It's dorm oh, wow. style. But however, this dorm is very different. I would say it's a suite because it had like a kitchen, bathroom oh, and nice. um, things like that. Yeah. So you stayed in a, in a dorm in a suite. Was it um, like an international dorm or was it like a lot of people yeah. from Europe in that dorm? A lot. Yeah. So it was an international dorm and everybody okay. in that dorm were all like Europeans and they were from um, everywhere right. except for the Czech Republic. So we okay. um, so once I got to my dorm, because I actually had to travel from Prague to um, Berno, which is about, I think Prague and Berno, if my memory is right, it might have been two hours. And okay. um, so I had to travel from the airport there because Berno doesn't have an official airport. So it was a two hour 
I took an Uber, which I shouldn't have done. It cost me like $300. Oh but um, yeah, because I was, I told you I was over. I just wanted to just be at Right, my, you just wanted to get, yeah. I didn't even, yeah, because I had booked a bus to get me there, but I think mm-hmm. I had missed the bus because I was moving so slow. And I was just like, let, oh me, just, let me just, you know, fix my life and just take an Uber and let me <laughs> take me directly where I need to be. So um when I got um to my dorm you know I was greeted by so if you're do, definitely going to the Czech Republic if you are going to Masaryk University definitely go for room A1 dorm A1 I got A2 but A1 is a little bit more renovated I think A2 should be renovated now and A3 is also renovated but if it's not just go for A1 uh, but I got A2 and when I got there um I was greeted by um a man who worked at the front desk and it just so happened mm-hmm. that he was from Canada and but he had like um Czech Republic background like I think his family was from Czech Republic and he was like um the receptionist at the front dorm so me and him were like really really good friends he was like an old man and like I don't know like I just felt a lot of comfort and safety like when I talked right to around him. him like a lot of comfort like because he was, he was from North America so he can relate to me like a certain right. thing and you know I just learned a lot from him about the culture and stuff like that like he like yeah that was definitely like my friend for sure um so, yeah, so you get there and then, like, you know, I have, like, my, um, I was in a dorm with international students. So everybody mm-hmm. there was from different European countries, Asian countries, South America, uh, people from America, like, you know, um, the right. USA, they were in there as well, too. Um, my roommate was um, Hungarian. So, um Anna, yeah, I love Anna. Now, um, my roommate mm-hmm. was Hungarian, and you know, she had got there before me. And um, in terms of like the dorming style, you know, we had our rooms. I um, I had a roommate. Um, uh, me and Anna shared a room together, but then after that, she ended up moving into room A one, and we were supposed to move together, but I ended up becoming um an RA for the building so I what? yeah I ended up becoming an RA for the building so I couldn't really leave um like literally the day we were supposed to move out they were like oh congratulations like you're an RA for the building I was like oh crap but I'm excited at the same time <laughs> so I didn't have wow. a day after um a little bit after like she had moved out and um yeah so you have like a nice little room area um mm-hmm. she moved up I ended up putting two beds together you know how you, you know how it is in Oswego y'all when you uh-huh. get your own room you start mashing your, your, your uh-huh. dumb bed comes becomes a queen size bed you know so you know I, I even had to buy new sheets like I was so happy um you know I had double everything you have your own bathroom you have your own kitchen um dressers drawers um tables and stuff like that like everything is your own one thing about their dorms is unlike Oswego and I think like Onondaga would be the closest representation of where I was living except everything was in my room um you definitely have to clean your own bathroom and stuff like that like I had to clean my bathroom I had to do my mm-hmm. like it was basically I lived in a dorm but I lived in my own apartment because I was paying rent by mm-hmm. the way yeah, so I was paying rent um this was not coming out of my pocket just in case you guys were like oh I gotta pay rent like no like your room and board that you would be paying at Oswego gets transferred mm-hmm. to you so that you can actually like get room and board while you're over there so right. I was paying rent and stuff like that and the dorming style was actually really really nice like I honestly I, I liked it a lot I had a, I had my own balcony um it was enough space like I used to you know host things in my room um and yeah, it was, I think it was cool. I like the dorming style for sure. Um, A1 was definitely a little bit more modern and, you know, definitely I could, I could have been in there, you know, that would have been a lot more, mm-hmm. relatable, but A2 wasn't too bad, but um, I think it was pretty cool. Okay. Well, um, I mean, I'm sure not everybody will have the R experience like you did, but uh, maybe can you touch on a little bit about the, the kind of the culture within your dorm? Like, I know you said it, it's similar to Onondaga and everybody kind of has their suite, but is there like a, um, maybe like a lounge area where everybody can all come together and meet and maybe do homework and stuff? Like, how is that in within like your dorm? Mm, that's very interesting. Okay. So the lobby was like the uh, most public it got, like it had chairs and furniture. So sometimes okay. just students out there not often maybe one student at a time would be out there um maybe right. do some homework and stuff like that but we also mm-hmm. did have a basement and we used the basement a lot for you know like 
before we went out to parties, so I'm just gonna leave it okay. at that. I don't think I can really say uh-huh. everything, but you know, um, just for parties, like we use that one to kind of like get ready to go to the parties. So you know, right. we got in our little lounge, everybody downstairs. Like I feel like that was the most we ever gathered together. <laughs> was okay. only when it was when we were about to like go party and stuff like that. But um, in terms of homework, if I'm being honest, like that's how you know I didn't really do a lot of work out there because I can't even recall doing work like I can't record wow. moments where I actually had to like do homework I think for homework mm-hmm. I just went to Starbucks that's when I started like getting into drinking Starbucks because in America I don't drink Starbucks at all mm-hmm. but and, uh, and when I got to the Czech Republic um because the unit so what the university is like it's not like Oswego where you have your dorming your food and everything is literally within commuting distance like you just have to walk mm-hmm. around just to get to where you're going um, unlike um, Oswego, um, Masaryk University is literally spread into the city. So I had to like take a tram to get to class. I had to, um, if I wanted to do anything that was out of my dorm, I literally had to like take transportation to get there. So it wasn't like walking distance. Like I had to like actually hop on the tram. I think it was like six stops, but it was super, super fast um, to get to like the main stations and stuff like that. So I would have to go there. Um, I didn't have that many classes. I only had four classes and one of them was like a a gym class so I wouldn't even count that as a class um Mm -hmm. so I have four classes and I was only I think I had I had so many days off from campus like I went to I was only on like um in class maybe twice out of the week so I had like three days to myself to literally do anything so like by Wednesday I want to say not even by that's actually crazy not even by Wednesday I think Monday and Tuesday were my main class days and then Wednesday mm-hmm. I had like this class that met every other day I mean every other week it was only oh. once a week so um okay. I had that teacher maybe twice every single month so I only sort of make six wow. times in the whole semester um and then some days we ended up canceling so I honestly I might have been in that class maybe three times out of the semester but I was I'm, I'm a good student regardless um I would definitely mm-hmm. say the homework was a lot easier I wouldn't say that European education is a lot easier than American um Mm -hmm. a lot of Europeans will say that it is but I can't really speak for that because again I was an international student so a lot of my classes you know the teachers know you're international they know you want to have fun so they're not going to sit here dump assignments on you Mm -hmm. and stuff like that but um yeah I went, I was on um, campus a lot, not camp, I wouldn't even call it campus, but I was in class a lot. And then when I used to leave class, like, you know, H&M would literally be right across the street from me. So I'll go shop a little bit. Or if I wanted to stay um, outside of my room, I would just go to Starbucks, um, order some stuff. And then that's where I did a majority of like my assignments and my homework was literally at right. Starbucks. And I wasn't, it's not like I went there with like friends to go speak, um, to go hang out or anything like that. Um, but sometimes my friend Kevin and I would go and we would um, go to Starbucks together and do some assignments but no like I didn't go to any libraries I, I didn't even find out about the library until maybe a week before I left <laughs> but yeah because like it wasn't the work wasn't hard and I was always right. out so it was like yeah it's like I just did my homework whenever it was before it was due I would just spend some of my weekends doing homework but for the most part like yeah we, we is I don't want to say it wasn't a lot of studying but it really wasn't a lot of studying Sounds good. Well, I mean, you definitely touched on my next question, which would be like how specific or how how were your classes? How did you feel in class? But you you definitely touched on that. So I would say the next question would be how was it or how easy or how hard was it to assimilate yourself into this new culture being in the Czech Republic? Mm, OK, that's a really good question. And I actually just spoke with Tiana. So Tiana, if you're listening to us, I'm about to steal the word that I told you I was going to steal. Um, one thing about me is and this is something that um, I definitely have been having a hard time to kind of word and Tiana um and the, she was literally like the last episode before this one she talked about mm-hmm. um one word that she brought up was adaptable and one thing about me is is I am very 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 adaptable and a lot like even like even while I was there I didn't experience like any um what's that thing jet lag or something like that like jet lag I was right. okay. jet lag yeah. when I got there like I was like okay. I don't know like, when it just comes to my body and it just comes to me in general, like I'm just very adaptable to my surroundings. It's one of those things that's like, I, I have to live here. I can't complain about it. Like why waste time right. complaining about being here? Why waste time complaining about something not being the way I want to? When I have to stay here for the next four months, I might as well just exactly. get used to it. So one thing, yeah. So like I was saying, one thing about me is I'm very, very adaptable and 
it's very it's kind of ironic because um, when I my first international trip was to Ghana and you know Ghana has a lot of like um, indigenous symbols and mm-hmm. um, one of the symbols is an ayah um, and it's it's spelled a y a and I just think it's funny because my name is spelled a w a I forgot what those mm-hmm. are called where you can spell it backwards and forwards and you get the same thing but. Yeah. Um, I related so much to that indinkra symbol because it just means somebody who's very adaptable. It's a plant that can survive no matter the climate, winters, um, you know, summer, fall, spring. It's somebody who's super adaptable and able to just adapt to their surrounding. And that's one thing for me. Like a lot of the students mm-hmm. there were feeling really, really homesick. And, um, you know, when I got there, even when I was like speaking to Kelsey, you know, about how comfortable I was being here, a lot of people were very surprised. It was like, wow, like, you don't seem bothered at all. It's like, cause I'm really not right. like, I don't, I don't know. It's because maybe I don't go into places with a lot of expectation. And that's something I really learned is that when you don't go into places with a lot of expectation, you easily, you adapt a little bit better um, mm-hmm. surroundings. Cause when you have expectations, it's kind of hard for you to kind of ignore them. And you kind of just be like, well, it has to be one way when in reality it really can't be that way. So right. you don't go into anything with any expectations. Kind of like how I didn't have any expectations to go to the Czech Republic. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I, I didn't have expectations from the jump. So it was one of those things where it was like, when I got here, you know, day one, I didn't have any jet lag at all. Like I was actually like waking up on European timing. So from the from day one, like I didn't have anything. Um, adapting to the culture was very simple, you know, just being my, really just being myself. And yeah, that would definitely be the one word I would use to kind of like explain how I was able to, you know, submerge myself in the culture. And I would definitely say it's because I'm just an adaptable person. Sounds, sounds really nice, honestly. Um, would you accredit some of that to, I, I guess, the culture there? I know you said that a lot of people there were very, very friendly. Mm. Um, and like you said, as soon as you, you pretty much got on a plane, there was somebody already trying to talk to you and open up to you and let you know yeah. th- what their culture was like. So would you accredit some of that to to the culture in the Czech Republic? Hmm. That's a really good question. Um. Wow. OK. I, I could say that. Yeah, I could definitely mm-hmm. say it has something to do with the culture in the Czech Republic, because, um, again, hmm. I don't know if I would say the Czech Republic because the city I was in is Beno and a majority of the students there are all international. So I would okay. I would accredit it to the students there. I would definitely say the students right. did make it a lot easier for me to adapt into it because like I said, a lot of like, Europeans are very friendly. Um, like, mm-hmm. yeah, like Europeans are very friendly. Like you walk up to somebody, you just start talking and you guys just go from there. Like they'll invite you places, right. invite you back to, you know, their dorm. They'll invite you to cook dinner and stuff like that. Like so people are super, super friendly down there. So I think that kind of made it easy for me to adapt as well. And then on top mm-hmm. of that, um, there was... Um, a lot of American, other American people that I've met, you know, people from, you know, Colorado, uh, people from New Mexico, um, Washington State. So, you know, I met a lot of other, uh, Wisconsin, like I met a lot of other um, good friends there. A lot of them I'm still like really, really good friends with. Um, Kevin's like one of my best friends. So, um, yeah, like we, I, I think those, I, I, yeah, I would have credited to a little bit. I'll credit a little bit to them, you know, okay. just a little bit. But, um, yeah, I think it was the international students and just that atmosphere that made it easier for me to um, to adapt for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, so I have a question. So <laughs> I, I kind of decided to, to put myself in the shoes of if I've never studied abroad, right? Okay. So I would want to know, what would a typical day look like for you in the Czech Republic, whether that would be, or maybe you can answer both. One would be like a weekend and then another time would be like during the weekday where you actually had class. So what would those typical days look like for you? Okay. Um, all right. That's a good question. So during, I'll start with the week. So during the week, I would just, well, a week where I actually had a class. Um, right. I would just wake up. Um, the earliest class I had, I think it was like 8.30 or maybe it was 9. So I would wake mm-hmm. up like um, the same way I would wake up on campus. I wake up like maybe I always usually like to wake up two hours before class because, mm-hmm. again, sometimes I move at my own pace and I have to do my hair and then I have to like eat breakfast, just a little bit of right. breakfast. But um, I would just wake up around maybe like 7.00. Um, I wake up around seven, I will, you know, go shower, you know, um, get dressed, do my hair, and then I would like eat a little bit of breakfast. And then while I'm doing breakfast, like I'll just like watch some TV shows or something like that. I'll go on my phone or, you know, 
respond back to my friends' messages because I was six hours ahead of them. So right. like um, sometimes, usually like in the mornings, they will, um, it was probably be like, by the time I woke up, it was probably like 1 a.m. back home. So some of my friends were still up. So right. yeah, like I used to call some of my friends at like 1 a.m. in um, New York and like we'll talk while I'm on my way to class. So oh, wow. um, depending on who's up, like I would just text them back, um, send my mom some pictures. Um, I would text like my sisters and stuff like that. And then of course, um, after my morning, I would just walk from my dorm to the, um, the the nearest tram stop. And I would just hop on the tram, go to the main center. And then from there, I would um, have to walk to, I think one of my, I was a, a lot of my classes were predominantly around like maybe, um, I took like a literature class, a sociology okay. class. So all of those are usually around like the same building. So I would just go to, you know, depending on what class it is, maybe the um, human, I don't think it's human development. I don't know, something like that. I would go to like that um, that building in itself. And um, I would just mm-hmm. go to class from there. Again, classes in Europe are very, very easy. Even though I was seeing these teach professors like maybe once, twice a week, to be honest, I was in class for no more than maybe an hour hour 15 minutes so Mm -hmm. um, I would just go there do my classwork um depending on how early my class was like my 8 a.m class or my 9 a.m class one of those times I would just go back home after that but um for my afternoon classes I would just um from there I would just um go to Starbucks complete the assignment that was probably due in like the next couple of days for that course um Mm -hmm. And then after that, I'll go back home and, you know, unlike, you know, and I swear, I mean, sometimes we have parties during the week, but it's not a lot, but the Czech Republic, there's a party every single day. Like you can find like different clubs. So if you are going to the Czech Republic, there's like, um, like, um, there's like party places. Like there's a club called Two Face. Um, dang, I don't even remember Two Face. I can't remember. This. this is another one, but when you get there, the people will tell you. But um, yeah, so usually like I'll go home and then after that, I'll probably like text my friends. Like we had like an international group chat, like, hey, like what's the moves for tonight? Um, and, you know, being that I was an international student, like we kind of got like a, um, a schedule of all the different things the school would be providing. So the school was mm-hmm. always providing something for international students every day, like game nights, oh, carry awesome. and stuff like that. Yeah. So if you were ever bored, you just look on the schedule and just hang and go out with your friends. So um we had like a nice little itinerary of not even an itinerary because we didn't have to follow it, but it was like, okay, cool. Like if you want to go out this weekend, I mean, if you want to go to like this game that you can, if there's nothing going on. So I usually just text my friends like, Hey, what's the vibes for today? And they'd be like, Oh, um, so-and-so told me about a party. I'm like, okay, we're going. And he's like, okay. Yeah. So I would just like, you know, get ready for that. I'll make my own dinner and stuff like that. Get ready for that. And I'll just go out for the night and um I'll come back and because my schedule again because I my schedule was so blocked up I could have like a really fun night come back and I'll be fine like I didn't have any place to go to the next morning so I used to be out till like maybe four in the morning three in the morning uh with my friends and we just go back home and we kind of just repeat the process the next day and then for the weekend the weekend is pretty much what I use to like really travel um I have a lot of family members in Europe um I have a lot of family members in like different countries so I have during my stay in the Czech Republic I was visiting um a lot of different countries mm-hmm. like I have family in Slovakia I have family in Austria um and then I after my trip I ended up going to France to go stay with um the rest of my family but wow. Yeah, so I was able to just, like, go out in the weekends with my friends. Like, we would all just be like, hey, like, what's the plans for today? And we'd be like, oh, we don't really have anything planned. Okay, cool. Let's go to Prague or um, let's go to... I think I went, yeah, I went to Slovakia with my friend. Let's go to Slovakia. The first trip I took was to um, the Netherlands. I went to Amsterdam. That was like the first trip I took outside of the um, Czech Republic with a few of my friends. Um, we went to Amsterdam. Um yeah, we went to a lot of other places. Um, I was also connecting because most of the times when you travel abroad, um, you're not the only person traveling abroad. Like, mm-hmm. Vegas, like you're going with other students. Y'all might not be going to the same country, but for right. the most, a lot of people tend to go to European countries. So, you know, I had a friend um, who was um, studying in Italy through the CAPA program. So I was able to go to Italy because I wanted, wanted to go visit her. So that's, yeah, your weekends could be as fun as you want them to. And also the school planned different excursions as well like they had a trip to Italy but that one had got canceled which is why I ended up just going to um, Italy by myself to go see my friend Mm -hmm. um they had I went through I went to two two um different programs with them I went to Hungary with them and I also went to Poland with them um 
So it's more so just really like your weekend is really up to you. Like it's so many different things you can do. Like you're in a new country. You, everything is literally like a bus ride away. So you can go to different parts of your country. Like, I mean, I only went to Prague. Um, most of the time I spent outside of the country, but um, I went to, you know, Slovakia. That's like the sister country. Cause you know, they used to be one big country. So went to Slovakia um, a few times and Everything is pretty much within close proximity. So like I said, your weekend is really up to you. And, you know, you could definitely just go by yourself. You could invite a few friends out. But for the most part, if you are in Europe, I don't I can't speak for a lot of other countries, but I know if you are. And um, I said uh, not other countries, a lot of other continents. But um, if you are in Europe in general, you can definitely like travel by bus to go anywhere like your weekend is super fun look into like the international clubs at your school because you know they had different programs to take me out just in case I needed a little bit more structure and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do Mm -hmm. I had a program to rely on okay they already booked the itinerary I just needed to pay my money up front and they would take care of everything else you could always do that as well but usually your weekends you're going to spend it either partying or you're going to spend it outside of the country or in a different part of the city but yeah that was pretty much how a lot of my weekends happen i was always like outside all right all right um food food is i'm sure a very big topic for people so did you have any issues with the food there i want to say i did not have an issue with the food there my one of my concerns when i first did go and it's something it's a concern that i have for a lot of like different countries um Mm -hmm. It's really because I'm a pescatarian, so, you know, I don't really eat, like, chicken, red meat, white meat, stuff like that. I don't eat those things. Um, So when I was looking into, like, the traditional Czech dishes, a lot of it has meat in it, specifically Mm -hmm. pork. Like, I'm Muslim, so I don't even eat pork at all. So I was like, all right, cool. Like, (laughs) I'm probably just going to be eating, you know, here in America. Like, when I go someplace and they don't have food for me, I always end up eating somebody's french fries or somebody's rice. And I'm African, so I eat rice all the time. So I was like, listen, I'm not going nowhere to go eat some more rice um so when I did go to the Czech Republic to my surprise being that it wasn't better known and it was like a student area like if I'm being honest I don't even think I had traditional Czech food at all maybe probably like my first week during like an international party that we had outside of that like there was like a lot of different um food spots that I could eat from it's a lot of Asian food down there a lot of um Vietnamese people live down there as well um, so mm-hmm. I went to a lot of like Asian restaurants. I went to a lot of Mexican restaurants. Um, there was like a bistro that was like literally a few walks from the, um, one of my um, classes. So I would go there. I went there a lot. If I'm being honest, I think I ate there the most. And then of course, like, you know how like we have Uber Eats, they have their own food stuff online. So from there, I was like eating. Um, so I would just order food. I'm a, I'm a heavy Italian food person. I love Italian food. So I will order a lot of pasta from there or a lot of pizza. Um, European pizza is very different from American pizza. I think it's a little bit more healthier, if I'm being honest, and a lot more fresh. So I would order from there a lot. Like in terms of food, I honestly wouldn't say I didn't have anything to worry about. I would go to Starbucks. The food was still the same from Starbucks. Right. Um, yeah, now I don't think about it. Yeah. And then when I used to go outside of the country, again, like because... I don't know if this, this is this could be taken a good way and a bad way, but a lot of like countries nowadays are starting to accommodate to, you know, a lot of foreigners. And mm-hmm. when I say foreigners, they usually try to accommodate really to Americans. And, you know, a lot of the food there is more American food than it is traditional food. Like you might have to right. go to like, maybe the rural areas to really get traditional food. But all the food there is pretty much all American food, like Things that I could find in America. Maybe not burgers. Yeah, they did have burgers down there. Never mind. They did have burgers. Um, (laughs) One thing I would say is that the vegan food was very accessible. I'm not vegan myself, but I try to really stay on like a vegan diet as much as possible but um Mm -hmm. because i like you know because i like salmon because i like shrimp and stuff that's the only way i go back but for the most part i eat a lot of vegan food and one thing i would say is a lot of vegan food are super super accessible um like even i think um kelsey my coordinator um she just so happened that she was visiting a lot of the schools in europe and she came to visit me and they checked she had a presentation to do and i'm the czech republic so um, me and her like met up and like it was like a lot of vegan options so it was like hey let's just go try vegan vegan food and like it's super super mm-hmm. good but in terms of food like that I didn't have to worry about anything about food like everything was pretty American so if you're a very picky eater um I wouldn't say I'm picky but if you're a very picky eater then there's something for you like if you're a fries person there's fries if you're a rice person there's rice like if the food was super flexible like it wasn't too much okay um let's talk about what maybe your best experience was and then the opposite what your worst experience was 
while I was there. Yeah, while you were in the Czech. Because that trip has had such an impact, and you know, I could talk about this for days, but we don't even have that type of time. But because that trip has had so much of an impact on my life, I think I've chosen to forget about the things that are bad. Like a lot of people have tried to ask me that question, like, what was the worst time? Like when I say I can't right. recall anything that really like stuck to me that was like, oh, wow, like this is actually kind of crazy. Like even now right. that I'm thinking about it, there wasn't a moment. Yeah, like, yeah, I can't think of nothing. That's, like, that's I think that, yeah, like, again, I think it's really just because, like, the impact that the trip has had, like, on my life and, like, the whole 180, uh, yeah, like, that trip has literally changed everything about me to the point where maybe something did, bad did happen and I just chose to ignore it or forget about it. But um, the good moments would be, honestly, everything. Like, everything was a good moment for me out there. Um yeah, everything was a good moment. Like, this is one thing. Like, when I think of my college experience, I just think about my study abroad experience. Like, I don't even think of being on Oswego. No offense yeah. to Oswego, you know, definitely. You know, you started it off for me. But um, when I think about my college experience, it's not, it's not, um, it's more so focused on my study abroad experience, um, if anything. So, in terms of like, I can't even specify a time, like a specific event that like outshadowed everything else, because I think every, I weigh everything the same with this experience. Like, everything was. Mm -hmm. Per I want to say it was perfect. There are some things that people might have been like, oh, like, this is too much. This is too this. Like, no, like, it was super amazing. Um, I had a lot of support while I was there. Um, a lot of advisors still had access to. I was still in contact with the study of our office. I was always in contact with Kelsey. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Like, I think I, my whole experience was amazing. Like, every single day was amazing. Like, there wasn't a time where... I was like, oh no, I don't really like this, or I'm ready to go home. Like, nah, it was it was a blast, to be honest. I mean, I, I think that's awesome for you to say. Um, just for the people who who's always been skeptical of studying abroad, like it's always like, ah, uh, there's gonna be so many bad things that happen. We kind of always think of the worst, but mm -hmm. I mean, you're the the perfect example. You you're pretty much saying like there's there's nothing that's gonna be that bad to yeah. where you're gonna have a miserable experience. I might have one, but I wouldn't say it's because of that country. Um, one, right. the one thing that, like I said, the one thing that did throw my trip off a little bit. Oh crap! Mm -hmm. Never mind. Yeah, this is a good one. So I was after I had planned all of this stuff and I was getting ready to go. My flight actually got canceled. Um, mm -hmm. My entire flight got canceled. I had to cut. I had to. I had to take two flights. I had to go from Sweden to the Czech Republic. Both flights got completely canceled, and um, I had to leave that day because of the itinerary that they had set for me that week. And I was like, mm -hmm. if I come in any other day, like I'm just be so lost and so confused. And um, that was actually to the point where I actually, um, I was actually on the phone with Oswego telling them like I was ready to come back to campus. Like, screw this trip. I'm not going anymore. My flight is canceled. Like, you really going to, yeah, I was like over it, you know? Because I was just like, out of all the things that can happen, this was going to happen. Like, yeah. yeah. And you know how airlines are. They're not communicating. They, they'll have you yeah, on the phone for two hours. And they, just for them to tell you, they don't know what's going on. And I was just like, yeah, like, this is pretty much my sign. Let me go back to campus. It's not too mm -hmm. late. My friend is already there. Let me go meet them, you know? And then my mom, you know, shout out to my mom. My mom called me. She was like, I, you're acting kind of crazy right now. Like, calm down. Because I had told the flight, I was like, just cancel everything. Right. Me. I mean, I'm not going no more. I'm on the phone with Oswego and I'm going back to my room. I'm going back to heart. And my mom was like, calm down. She was like, it's not your fault that the flight got canceled. You have to understand. Like my mom is very like business person. Like she's one of those people, like she's going to get her money's worth. Like you cancel something, you're going to give me something in return. So my right. mom, okay, cool. No, call them back. Tell them, of course. you know, of the next available flights. And she was like, and um, so I called them back and they told me, and my mom, I had my mom like on another phone. I was like, okay, cool. So I was talking to both of them and they were like, okay, cool. We can get you on our next flight to Sweden for the next day. So no, it wasn't even for the next day. It was at, I think the flight was at midnight, like around right. like 1230 at night. So I still had to go to the airport the day I had already decided. So they was like, listen, mm -hmm. we have another flight at midnight um, and then we can get you on that flight. And then we can also get you a connected flight to the Czech Republic. However, I was only supposed to stay in Sweden for two hours. They were like, however, you're going to have to stay in Sweden for a day. 
And they and then my mom was like, you know, make them throw in the hotel, like make them throw mm-hmm. in the hotel. Of course. So you know, I'm cool. They said, like, all right, cool. We're gonna get you a nice hotel in Sweden. Um, you know, we're gonna give you like a food voucher, so we'll take care of everything in the hotel. You don't worry about anything. We'll accommodate to you. And I was like, all right, cool. So you know, I calmed down a little bit more, and you know, and then and I, the thing is that the reason why I probably didn't think of that right away is because I got to stay in Sweden for free. Right. So I really got to stay in Sweden for free. I got to visit another country for free. The hotel I stayed at was not too far from the airport, but right in the city as well. So I was able to explore. Um, I said I was about to say Switzerland. I was able to explore Sweden. Um, I was in Stockholm, so I was able to explore that city um, while I was there. And um, yeah, so I think that it was a blessing in disguise. But this right. that was just a moment where I was probably just like done with everything. I was like, yeah this is not fair to me and I'm going to cancel my flights. I think. I mean, I think it's super, it's super funny that like one of the most craziest experiences that you have, you pretty much forgot about because <laughs> your study abroad was so great. Yeah. So, um, honestly, lastly, I, I wanted to ask you, uh, so if I was a, a prospective student, right. Um, what advice would you give me in terms of studying abroad, whether that would be in the Czech Republic or honestly anywhere, what advice would you give me? Mm. So, you know, I try to stay away from the generic answer of just do it. You know, everybody right. says just do it. It's true. Just do right. it. But um, some advice I would give to people is going with no expectation. I think that would be my advice for um, study abroad. I know a lot of us, especially for us being Americans, we're very spoiled. You know, Mm -hmm. we take a lot of things for, um, a lot of things that we have, we take it for granted. And a lot of other countries don't really have that. So just just speaking on a general term, not specifically for the Czech Republic, like depending on where you're going, like just have no expectation. This is not to say like, don't, don't just go there and just like, just be in a funky mood, but just don't have expectation as in like, don't bring any of your own ideas or any of your own beliefs with you um, to that country, you know? And, I, and when I say like those things, like, don't be like, oh, you know, because I have this in America, I need to have that where I'm going. Or, you know, just don't be like a brat or anything like that. Like, just go there with, be open-minded, really. Like, just go there, be open-minded um, and really just, just be able to just have some fun. Like when you go there, you're going to learn a lot about yourself. Like, don't get me wrong. Like a lot of people are not going to have the same experience as me where I was kind of able to just adapt my way through the country with no problem. You know, maybe for somebody else, you know, the first month or so you might, you might still be like homesick. Like you might not go as much outside. You might not interact with people as much, but don't, don't let that be the bulk of your trip. Because if you want to just stay in your room, you could just do that in Oswego for free. Um, so definitely don't do that when you're abroad, but just be ready to just have fun. Like just go there being open-minded, meet as many new people as you can, because I know so many different people in so many different parts of Europe. Like if I wanted to, I can call anybody and I could be like, oh, hey, I'm coming. Like, you know, and they'll like literally house me. And, you know, when you travel, accommodations take up a lot of your money. So um exactly so you this is like a nice place for you to stay or because you were super super friendly to somebody or because you um you know you were really nice and it's really just all about just like I said just having no expectation like even after I went to the Czech Republic you know I was able to while I was in Europe I was able to visit nine European countries all together including the Czech Republic yeah so I was able to go to all those different places why because I didn't have expectation I was able to just go there for a week I was able I stayed in France for about a month and I was able to really just enjoy my time there because I didn't have any expectation like everything that happened to me while I was abroad was all came by surprise and it was all fun surprises um simply because I didn't expect the country to you know give me a good time or I didn't expect mm-hmm. the country to provide me with a good time. Cause you have to understand you make your experience, like you make your fun. And I feel like a lot of people don't understand that they go there and they kind of like, okay, let me see what you have to offer. And they're not doing right. anything. Like it's not going to give you something if you're not even going outside to go get it. Exactly. So, you know, you definitely just don't stay in your room all day long. Like you're in a, a new country. Like you have to understand how like blessed you are to even be in a new place. Like you speak to people, like for me personally, 10 countries, I don't even think that's a lot, but I, you know, I speak to people and they're like 10, like girl, I ain't even been yeah. to 10. And you know, <laughs> right. it humbles you. Cause you, you have to think, you're like, dang, like that's actually true. A lot of people don't get to travel in their life. And you know, this is usually at the top of people bucket list. They're like, yo, once I get some money, I'm just going to travel. And a lot of right. people aren't able to do that. So you just have to be, 
be appreciative as the fact that you are in a different space and just try to emerge yourself in a culture. Like maybe mm-hmm. I'm that person where I'm super, I don't want to say I'm nosy or anything like that, but like I'm super curious. That's the word. I'm a very curious person. I like to learn about just different places. I like to learn about what makes somebody that person. Because when you being from uh, New York City, even though we live in a melting pot, you don't just walk up to people and just ask them, like, where are you from? Even though you know they're international, you don't just walk up to them and ask them, like, hey, where are you from? Oh, what, what Asian country are you from? You know, you don't do that because it's just not in our culture. Right. But, um, you know, like, when you're abroad and you're an international student, and I was just saying this on the other um, episode with Tiana, is like, this is a free pass for you to, I don't want to say invade or intrude in people's lives, but this is a free way for you to get to know somebody else's culture. You know, Absolutely. get to know somebody who's been to Portugal. I met a lot of people from Brazil, so I'm, like, getting to know people that live in Brazil. People um, that I ended up, like, close to the end of my trip, I ended up getting a new roommate, um... Um, she was from Japan, and that's actually one of the countries that, like, that's actually number one country that I want to go to. And she was mm-hmm. from Japan, so I got to understand the Japanese culture, get to talk to her about the Japanese culture, and you know, I got to speak to her about certain things that I wouldn't have been able to do back home. And then I think like while I was there as well too, it just makes me appreciate just Heart Hall. Like if you're somebody who wants to start getting into international, especially if you're a freshman, this is the perfect time because we don't have any programs currently running or anything like that. So if you want to like just feel what it's like to be, not even be an international student because you don't really feel that until you go abroad. Like I actually was on the other end of it. So, but just live in Heart Hall, y'all. Like people don't like Heart Hall or not even don't like, but you know, they prefer not to live in Heart Hall simply because of the ISTs and stuff like that. But I promise you, it's the ISTs is nothing. Like it's completely worth it. You're learning about somebody else's culture. But if you're somebody who wants to get, get into, you know, like, being around international students or even get to know somebody else's culture, definitely just go to Heart Hall. Like the European students there, um, I don't want to say just European, but a lot of them are European students and some of them are Asian students as well too. Like when you go there, like just talk. Just get to know people. A lot of the ISTs that they present attend those ISTs, get to know a little bit more about their culture. Um, and I think that's what I really appreciated. Like once I got back was the fact that I was actually an international student. So I could kind of relate to them in that area. Mm-hmm. So it's one of those things where it's just like, you no, know, don't go into places with um, expectation, you know, have your own fun. You know, you make your own experience and, you know, just take your baby steps. Start off in Heart Hall maybe for a semester or a year, but I think a semester is pretty good. And then, you know, you make some friends there and maybe you study abroad in their country, you know. I know there's a lot of people in um, Heart Hall that were from Spain during the years I was there. So, you know, mm-hmm. maybe you can study abroad in Barcelona or Madrid and you'll have some friends there. So I think those are like the last things I have to say in regards mm-hmm. to um, any advice or any tips I could get to people. Awesome. I would I would absolutely agree with you. I think that was super, mm-hmm. super great advice, because if you go anywhere with preconceived notions, you're bound to be disappointed. Yeah. Like you should you should never want to, you know, go somewhere expecting something to be handed out to you or expecting something right. to be a certain way, but because you've never been there. Exactly. So I definitely want to thank you for that. Uh, yeah. you know, a little word for the audience. I'm sure the audience gained a lot of knowledge from you. So I want to thank you for this episode of the Being Abroad <laughs> podcast. Thank um, you. Um sponsored thank by our, our yeah. host, Perfect. right? And um she will definitely be the host again for the next upcoming episodes. Yeah. But I would Stay of tuned. course like to thank you again for thank giving you. the audience such valuable information. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, definitely make sure you guys check out the other episodes. If you want to hear about DeAndre's own experience, check out the China, um, the uh, his China um study abroad um episode. So um again, thank you for hosting this as well to definitely provide a different perspective um outside of my own. But um yeah, I'm I'm gonna let you close it out. You can close it out. All right. Well, uh thank you guys for being on this episode of the podcast of being the being abroad podcast. Again, my name is DeAndre Coot Anderson. You can check out my previous episode that I did with Awa and see you. A minute. Did you guys honestly think I was gonna leave this episode? without saying goodbye oh you guys you guys should know me a little bit better than that (laughs) just a little bit (laughs) but oh my god hi guys i honestly hope you guys enjoyed this episode um you guys enjoyed hearing my story because i personally enjoyed sharing my story and 
Yeah, I want to get on here and say, and the reason why I'm even going on and adding this little extra part, because I know you guys are like, yeah, this is not a part of the schedule. But guys, I just want to come on here and say that this was actually my final podcast um, series. Once you listen to this um, episode, I would have already walked across the stage at graduation. So yes, I am in the graduating class of the fall 2021. And um, it's really a bittersweet moment. I can't even lie. It's such a bittersweet moment right now. And, you know, I'm just sitting here literally. Um, I think it's almost like, what, five days until graduation. I'm just sitting here and, you know... Listening to this episode and just reflecting on my time at SUNY Oswego and I'm just reflecting on my study abroad experience. And I just want to just tell you guys that, you know, like just go out there and do it. Like study abroad has changed my life in so many different ways that sometimes it's very hard to even talk about it because it's like I've never felt something that has shifted my perspective in such a way and I just really hope that you guys feel this as well you guys have felt it throughout each and every single episode that you guys hear that we're not just coming up here and just talking like we're not making noise for no reason like we're serious about this this is a life-changing opportunity and I just hope whoever's listening just takes full advantage of it like I've learned so much about myself I've learned what I want to do in my life I found my passion you know my passion and you know helping more and more students study abroad and you know helping to diversify study abroad so I hope you guys felt everything I said I hope you guys felt everything the other alumni said and I really hope to hear about more study abroad trips like I can't wait to go back on the um you know the study abroad website and see new faces on the experience page because oh my god I just know there's an amazing story behind it but you know before I even close off I would love to give a big shout out to the study abroad office thank you thank you thank you thank you I can't even thank you guys enough like Thank you so much for making my college experience. Thank you so much for showing me the finer things in life. (laughs) And, you know, just thank you so much for just the support and the mission that you guys are on. Like, wow, I just I love to study abroad office. Yeah. And I really want to give a big, 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 big shout out to Kelsey and Lizette. Like you guys don't understand how much of an impact, you know, these two women have on my life on my study abroad experience like thank you so much for taking me under your wing and just exposing me to this lifestyle and just exposing me to helping other students and I just can't thank you guys enough literally some of the best people I've ever met are SUNY Oswego and you know I hope you guys like I can't wait for some of you guys to even be working with them yourselves and, you know, them being your coordinators when you go on these trips, because I promise you guys, you are in great hands. And yeah, I just want to give leave off on that note of, you know, I'm going to go with the generic term. Just do it, guys. Just do it. Go study abroad. Have fun and just be yourself. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this series. I hope you guys enjoyed the final episode. I hope you guys enjoyed all the other episodes. And on that note, guys, this is the end of season one. And without further ado, we're going to close out. It's a wrap. So yeah, guys. Bye.